Namaste everyone. This is Jitendra Pant and this video is about how to make the best out of your PhD. So we all work very hard during our PhD but might not end up publishing a lot. In fact, for most of us, PhD can be a very stressful journey that can really test us as a person. I completed my PhD in December 2018 from the University of Georgia with a PhD in Biomedical Engineering. And I also had my ups and downs, but with right planning and right guidance, I was able to complete my PhD in three and a half years with 16 publications, seven patents and more than 20 awards. During my PhD, I was also acknowledged by the director of Center for Disease Control and Prevention, Dr. Redfield. My PhD work also resulted in a TEDx talk. You can find the link uh, in the comment below. Also, I acted as a editor of an England based journal in addition to serving as a reviewer for more than 10 journals globally. So in this video, I'm going to share with you some strategies that helped me during my PhD and I believe that you can use them as a valuable tool, as a valuable technique to make the best out of your PhD. So let's get started. So let's get started with strategy number one make use of the power of emotional intelligence one of the most important most one of the most successful ways of doing your phd is to do it without any stress but we work with people and oftentimes it gets difficult it is practically impossible to have good relationship with everyone and that's where the power of emotional intelligence come into play while I'm not suggesting that you waste your time in pleasing everyone because sometimes some people are tough, some people are difficult to deal with and I totally understand that. All I'm suggesting here is identify important people in your lab, in your team and make sure that you never burn any bridges with them. One out of, one out of these important people is obviously your boss and I don't have to go into details of why your boss is important. Of course, uh, you should have good terms with your PI. But there are other people in the lab which are important, who are important and it's your responsibility to identify them and the earlier you identify them, the better it is for you. One way to identify these people is to see who are those people in the lab whom your boss values a lot. These are the people who have added a lot of value to the lab. These are the people whom your boss seek guidance from. So naturally when you have good relationship with these people, they are going to give feedback to your boss from time to time and it will assure that if you are already working hard, if your boss has been noticing it, then saying it to him or her will reinforce the idea and hence will make a good impression that will serve a long way. Strategy number two is start to publish a little early in your PhD career. A lot of you might ask that without any experiment done, how can somebody publish? You would be surprised to know that I had my first manuscript submitted within three months of my arrival in the lab. And my advice is do not wait to finish experiment in order to publish your first article. Your first article can be a review article and I'll tell you why writing review article is important and how it can save you a lot of time. In the first few months, you are required to study a lot. You are required to understand the field a little better. You would be new, so you have to go into the depth of a lot of things. And while you are reading a lot of papers, while you are reading a lot of books, why not convert it into a publication? So by writing a review article, you are not only getting yourself started in the field of publication, but also boosting your confidence that will serve you a long way during your PhD. And with that, I'll move on to my strategy number three. Strategy number three is do multiple projects at a time. Yes. So what happens during PhD is we start a project and sometimes it does not go in the desired direction. We get frustrated and a lot of times we are waiting for certain chemicals and we are wasting a lot of time sitting idle. In this particular situation, it would be very helpful that you have multiple projects going on. And my advice would be the strategy that I use during my project was at any point of time, have your projects divided into three different categories. Type A projects, 
these are the projects where you have already submitted a manuscript and you are waiting to hear back from edit editor or reviewer type b projects these are the projects where you are almost about to finish your experiments and you are writing your manuscript and type c project these are the project which are about to get started which are which have just begun to get started and uh, by making sure that you have projects in these category you will always feel motivated because there are projects that are about to get published there are projects that are about to get get um, uh, get uh, completed and there are projects that are about to get started so even when you are feeling low even when one project is not working you always have something going on you're always working on something and that will make sure that you do not only feel positive you not only feel positive but you also see the results of your hard work and with that let us move on to strategy number four strategy number four is do not wait to finish all your experiments before you start a manuscript yes a lot of us waste a lot of time in writing manuscript after we have done our experiments but my suggestion to you is start your manuscript on day one of your experiment I understand that you don't have all the data ready and you cannot predict all the results but you can always write the introduction you can write the material section you can write the method section and then you can leave spaces for your result and discussion section discussion section and also leave space for your conclusion and abstract and they won't take a lot of time and by that time you are about to finish all the experiments uh, by the time you are about to wrap up you should have your manuscript ready so as soon as you are done with your experiment here is a manuscript which is ready to go for publications and this particular strategy was the reason how I could publish so much how I could publish 16 papers during my PhD journey and with that let us move on to strategy number five Tip number five is don't try to do everything by yourself. I have seen this to be a very common trend among PhD students that they try to do everything by themselves and they will end up having very few publications or no publications at all. Yes, it sounds very, uh, it sounds very surprising, but this is the truth. And I'll tell you why. This way you will end up spending a lot of time because uh, if you try to do everything by yourself, uh, every experiment by yourself, uh, writing the manuscript by yourself you have to invest a lot of time and you have to understand that you don't want to go for years go on for years completing your PhD you want to finish it on time and get to the next stage of your life so for that you have to understand that PhD is the perfect time to learn leadership PhD is the perfect time to learn delegation and PhD is the perfect time to make use of the smart minds around you Another thing that you can do is talk to your PI and ask him or her if they can help you in getting an undergraduate student. This way you will get the work done from the undergraduate students and in turn they will get the lab experience. So it is a win-win for both. And overall if you see whether you are taking help of a PhD student or help of an undergrad in finishing your project you get more publications they get more publications so it's beneficial for everyone and another important thing that you should realize is after your PhD you would other either want to become a PI or join industrial lab or continue as a postdoc and regardless of whatever your plan is it is important to learn leadership it is important to learn delegation so make opportunity make use of this opportunity and make sure that you are not doing everything by yourself and with this let us move on to my tip number six which is a lot of us are under the impression that PhD is all about research it is not guys you have to understand that when you publish a paper it is much more than research when you get a grant it is much more than research when you receive awards it takes much more than research and one of the most important quality that you can develop during a PhD is improve your writing skills and trust me 
the same quality of work can be published in nature or in a very high impact factor journal or it can be published in an impact factor of one or two depending on how well you write your manuscript you can get funding out of your ideas depending on how well you write your draft so make sure that you hone your writing skills and do not undermine the importance of writing so i'll be repeating myself don't be under the impression that research is all it takes to become a scientist it is much more than that also learn teamwork like i mentioned earlier uh, also improve your communication skills because that will help you present your ideas in different forums and this will help you get a lot of presentations related award writing skills will also help you get a lot of travel grants it will help you get your own funding your phd there are different forums like bmes sfb i'm talking particularly in in the field of biomedical research but i'm sure that in every respective field there are a lot of uh, different grant opportunities there are a lot of awards and funding opportunities that require you to write your idea and unless you write your idea right it does not matter how hard working you are it does not matter what quality of research you do so please 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 place a lot of focus in improving your writing skills my tip number 7 and my last tip is please understand that your phd is not going to change the world i'm not here to discourage you but what i'm trying to tell you is be realistic if at all you want to finish your phd on time know that your phd is not going to change the world it takes a lot more time than 4 5 years if you really want to make the difference in your field and you can do it when you are a postdoc and eventually when you become an assistant professor or you join industry but if you are a phd student your main focus should be publishing as much as you can writing few grants getting your patents and finishing it up and try to finish your phd within 4 5 years don't go beyond that if you are going beyond that you are probably not doing some of these things that i have shared in this video and guys with this i'll wind up and please give your suggestions in the comment box below and let me know the topics that are important to you as a student or as a budding entrepreneur or as uh, someone who have just started his or her job and i would be happy to put the focus of my next video around the things that are most important to you